Hi, I'm Kieran Began. I'm a geophysicist at the British Geological Survey. Just looking at some of the magnetograms stored at the National Geoscience Data Centre here in Edinburgh. So this one in particular is from Greenwich Observatory in London. And it comes from 1859 when there was a famous geomagnetic storm nowadays called the Carrington event. And this was a particularly large geomagnetic storm. And in London was the only place where there was a, a continuous record of the storm made. Uh, these are very old magnetograms. Um, and what you're looking at basically is photographic paper that was wrapped around a drum. And in, in the area where they made the measurements of basically a large room in a non-magnetic environment, so it was a wooden hut with uh, copper nails, and things like that, to make sure there wasn't any steel. And they would hang a bar magnet on a thread so that it would move as the Earth's magnetic field varied. Now, on this particular day, 1859, September 1st, 1859, you can see there's a very large change in what's known as the declination angle. And declination is the angle between true north and magnetic north. So basically, essentially what your compass points to. So in this case, the declination starts here and travels across the page. It wraps around, it comes back here. It's named after Richard Carrington, who um, was a silver brewer. And his um, Victorian hobby was counting sunspots. And on this particular day, like he did probably most days of the week, he was looking at the sun uh, through a telescope projected onto a piece of paper on the ground and he was drawing a sunspot. And he spotted two very bright beams kidney-shaped beans, he described them in his paper, of light appearing. So we had no idea what they are. We now know they're called solar flares. And they give off a huge burst of um, gamma ray energy when they do this. And so this energy causes the Earth's ionosphere to change. And when it does that, um, it creates an electric current in the upper atmosphere, and then that generates a magnetic field. And what we record on the page is that magnetic field uh, created by the upper atmosphere caused by the flare ionizing it. Um, but of course, none of this was known at the time. So Richard found a corroborating other scientist called uh, Hodgkin, who uh, said, oh yeah, I saw the same thing. And then somebody looked at the Greenwich magnetogram and found that, yeah, oh yeah, there was some sort of magnetic change at the same time. Now, about 16 hours later, one of the largest geomagnetic storms ever recorded um, hit the Earth. And we can see it here, these huge variations in this page, and then following two to the next day, on the following page, you can see that the compass needle is basically swinging back and forward wildly in this case uh, over the course of uh, several hours. So what we've done in the British Geological Survey is, is photograph these very delicate records, put them onto our database, which is freely available for anyone to access online. And then from those, we've um, used a computer program to essentially hand draw on top of these curves and make that into a digital version of the magnetogram. And this is an example. So although this happened on the 1st of September, actually there was a series of storms starting in mid-August of 1859 and carrying on for a few weeks. So this is the Carrington storm here and that little dimple you see just there is corresponds to just this little bit here shown in blue. A lot more activity and then this is where the main bulk of the storm occurs. So using these records we can go back in time and work out things like what was the magnetic field rate of variation and we can apply that to modern technology and see what would happen if a similar event to the current storm was to occur today.